They say the course of true love never did run smooth, and that's certainly the case for our next guests, Bob McLaren and Dee Dee Zweibel. Well, after falling in love with each other in their 20s whilst working on board a cruise ship, the couple enjoyed a whirlwind romance before going their separate ways in 1974. But 42 years later, and with the blessing of his late wife, Bob decided to reach out to Dee Dee to see if there was still a spark between them. Well, thank goodness he did. The couple are joining us now from their home in Los Angeles. Good morning, good evening, Bob and Dee Dee. It's great to see you here today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we should start at the very beginning of this story because you first met, as we said, there on a cruise and it was 1974. And I just wonder whether you remember that first moment that you locked eyes on each other. What was that like? Well, uh, to be honest with you, it was quite unusual because uh, Didi was on as a magician's assistant uh, on the cabaret and I was playing the show band. So we were sent off uh, whilst the magician was on and we were brought back just to go back on and play. And I noticed the magician had like a big wicker laundry ba basket with loads of swords in it. <laughs> so he started pulling the swords out and then he pulled the top off the basket and she appeared. Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> First time I saw her. Well, the, the thing is that there was an incredible spark between you. You spent months together on the, uh, on the ship, uh, a, a raw chemistry like never before, you say. You went to the Caribbean, um, to the Pacific Islands, to Japan and further. And so the plan was after the cruise that, that you, you had found each other that you would settle in Scotland. But, Dee Dee, you got cold feet. Yes, I did. I just wasn't ready. I, I was just nervous about it because I'd have to give up everything here and go to Scotland. And if it didn't work out, what do I come back to? And I thought if he came here, he was still living at home. If it didn't work out, he can just go back home. And so, but Bob, that didn't work out. That didn't work out. But there was a little bit of a connection, a thread between the two of you, because Bob, being a musician, you made a music tape, and I think you spoke on it and you sent that to Dee Dee. And Dee Dee, you listened to that a lot, didn't you? Yeah, I, I mean, I still do, in fact. Oh. <laughs> it's a great tape. And um, so I've heard his voice all through the years. <laughs> well, you, um, you did lose contact, lose touch. Life goes on in different uh, areas. Uh, Dee Dee, you're very successful, sort of dancer, actress. Um, but you went on to live your life in, in LA. Um, then Bob, you're yeah. back in the UK, you married your first wife, Helen, had four children, married for 31 years and tragically she died of cancer in 2008. You then remarried a lovely lady called Jo who was diagnosed with cancer a few weeks after your honeymoon. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Which is utterly, yeah. utterly heartbreaking. And it was during the counselling sessions when you've you know, been together with, with Joe, that that um, and she, you were facing this thing together. Um, that that you found out that she was worried that you'd be lonely. Yes, indeed. Um, we attend. We both attended counselling sessions at Forest Home uh, Hospice in Poole. Uh, I thought I'd give them a shout. Um, right. They were absolutely fantastic, and uh, they brought us together for some of the sessions. Um, we had separate sessions, but they brought us together for two sessions. And it was during that time that Joe said that she wanted me to look for old school friends and stuff like that, you know, when she died, and to look up that woman you keep on talking about, <laughs> that actress from Los Angeles you, you're very fond of. Make sure and find out what she's doing, you know. I know, bless her. I mean, just what an unbelievable gift for her to give to you, really. A parting gift. Amazing. So, one thing saying it, another thing doing it, because it must have been... You hadn't seen Dee Dee for years. So, you found her on Facebook. She's got quite a recognisable surname, so you managed to track her down. That first sort of, hi, it's me, did you recognise each other? How did it go? Uh I recognised Dee Dee. I did not recognise Bob. <laughs> I mean, my reaction when when I saw his picture on Facebook was, that's not him, really? because it didn't look anything like he used to. But when we started Skyping and talking, he knew too much, so I knew it had to be him. <laughs> so you're backwards and forwards, you're chatting, and then, OK, why don't we meet up? This is when you could. And you fly to L.A., and you meet each other at the airport. And this is the extraordinary thing about true love, isn't it? That unbelievable moment that no matter how many years it's been, 42 years, that there you are, standing face to face, what happened? 
it was just as if we were carrying on from 1974. As we walked along talking to each other, it was just the same, the same as 74. We just carried on where we left off. That's so lovely. How did you feel, Dee Dee? The connection was so strong, and I didn't expect that. You know, after all these years and seeing him and on Skype and not being able to make the connection that it was the same person. Mm. It, it was very strange. <laughs> so obviously, now we're speaking to you in Los Angeles, so that's where you've, you've made a home for yourself now. Bob, how did your family here react to it? Because obviously you've got the kids and you're now living away. How did they feel about Dee Dee coming back into your life? Um, it took a bit of getting used to, you know. <laughs> my daughter said, could you not... I, I live in Poole, Dorset. And my daughter said to me, could you not find somebody from Bournemouth to go out with <laughs> rather than somebody five and a half thousand miles away? Yeah. <laughs> but once they got used to it, I mean, we, we've been on holiday together, um, the whole family and Dee Dee, you know, we're, uh, it's going well, yeah. My family adore Bob. Great. That's good to yeah. hear. That's, That's good to hear. Well, on March the 13th, 2020, just before the wheels fell off the One world. Of the final ones. Um, yeah, you went to Beverly Hills um, and uh, and you sealed the sealed the deal, tied the knot, um, and uh, and you are again there. You are that fabulous picture. So you are a married couple. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was the only way we could stay together. I mean, we were happy just being together, but because of the visa situation, the only way we could be together was to get married. So is there going to be a big party when we're all out of this? Yes. Yes. Yeah. In England, in Florida, where my family is, and here in L.A. <laughs> Three parties. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, You're listen, welcome. Well, it's a <laughs> wonderful st story of true love. You got there in the end. Thank you both so much for being here. We wish you a very happy life together. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. That is a lovely story. Thank you, Thank you very Thank much. You.